Yo, it's Guido coming at you with the Tactics Talk. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate your support. I've got a new replay submitter. Another new submitter. That's good. We've brought some more people on board and they're submitting replays. This time we've got Type VIIC, Type Vic from Clan Infill. Tier 5 T50 Soviet light tank. A Tier 5 light tank. A T50, near and dear to my heart. This tank, eh, about five years ago. It was a huge part of company battles. It was an awesome tank. Back when tanks were glued to the ground, it was even faster than it is now. But the glory days, they're all gone. It's a shadow of itself. He comes up here on Westfield and spawns into the northeast and heads down to the south on the east side of the map. Leopard dies real quick. He is running binoculars and food, which is really going to help out what is kind of anemic spotting range for a light tank at tier five it's not very great but that's going to help help out quite a bit what he's got going on there i don't know if he has optics you'd have to let us know chappie's running around the m 4s running around missed a shot on the p43 there normally on this map i'll say hey go up to the northwest almost no matter what you're driving do not go down here to the southeast because it is a stagnated fight but let's see how that plays out this time a little bit of lead fire there I will say that Type has a little bit of trouble on occasion, there's an example right there, of not using lead fire. Just a gunnery thing. There's a 3001 shot selection. I'd have switched immediately to the M4. It's a much softer target. You have a hard time pending that 3001P. We do switch and then we have a much better time enjoying ourselves eating hit points. Flap, flap, flap. Maybe a little more lead fire. You're really just kind of center massing everything even if they're moving. Be careful with that. That guy runs down there. Chappie's raging around. You'd really love to get rid of that Chappie. 3001 looks like he's doing a runner strip. No, there's a shot that's well behind. Somehow that one gets there. It's just the velocity helps you out. But a little more lead, I think. Now we're getting the picture. There we go. That's much better. Usually after five or six shots, people start to figure that thing out. Now, you knew that 3001 was busting through the middle. I probably would have reacted faster than that and positioned myself right here to get shots on that guy's side or back. For some reason, you ignore that for quite a long time. Finally, we sort of turn around, and then we back up. Just get down there and get a shot. Gun depression is a problem on the T-50. Circle, circle, if he's still alive. It may have been that you just assumed other people would take care of him, but this is a big point that I always bring up. Don't assume other people are going to take care of something. <laughs> Not in this game. Now, sometimes you simply can't go do it because it would be suicide for you. That's not what I'm saying. Finally get that chappy. But in a situation like that where clearly you could have easily got in there and put some hit points on that dude, put some damage on that dude, I would have done that. So it's pretty even, six to seven, and we have basically one down here in the south. But this is where the problem with this position comes in. What do you do with the win on this flank? Do you push down into their RD and cap area where you're in a bowl? No. Not a good idea. Do you rage around here in the open, getting spotted by a 12T and potentially shot by the 25 TP and whatever else might be camping over there? Well, no, that's not a great plan either. And we're kind of out in the open here. Dueling with the 12T is a bit dangerous. There, somebody's shooting at you. Whether I think that might have been artillery, not sure. Big dust cloud comes up, and we finally run off feeling like hanging out in the open is a bad idea, which it is. We're going to come back to this bush. And this is something that irritates a lot of people when scouts get up in the bushes like this and sort of hang out in the same place the entire game. Sometimes it's about map control. You were supporting and firing, so I have no argument with the early part of it. But again, I bring you to the point of, all right, great, we won this. Now what? What do I do next? Well, unfortunately, one of your mediums, who is this over here? The T3045M at full hit points is raging in with a T67, a 60 GFT, a 25 TP, and a scout all hanging out. Now, it looks like he is, was he bright enough to be in a bush? I think he is. He's bright enough to be in a bush. That's a good thing. And really when you play this map this way and you win this southeast position, but it's either neutral up north or you've got some other guys kind of running around in the middle because you really have nobody in the town there, this is what it turns into. Kind of a bit of a camp fest while you wait for something to happen. And holy cow. Somehow, the Panzer T-25 gets in amongst your artillery and eats them alive. 
Now this is a crazy sequence right here, which kind of cracks me up. This Panzer 25, T25, is really focused. I mean, he is locked on to this artillery. He is not letting this artillery get away. Even though our hero is running around whacking him on the run. <laughs> Little miss right there. There's the 12T. I don't know why he didn't just ram him. Get a little bounce. So we're auto-aimed right there. I don't know. I might have taken that off right at the end. When you closed in real close like that, you started sticking your barrel into the angled armor right there. One artillery. There'll be another one coming in here. He gets a, There we go. And the 12T looks like he wants to come take a piece of you. There's only three of you. The O1, you may have noticed, has been hanging out in the same rock. He's very low hit points up there. People have been yelling at him. We'll see what he does. He's angry that the M4 ran off. And this is pretty funny. This M4 is over here with 108 hit points. So we've got our hero up into the bush up here. And again, this is sort of what this turns into. All he can really do is try to hide for a bit and see if the enemy makes a mistake. Because right now, with the number of guns and artillery in the game, for him to get out in the open and get spotted, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. And even now, if somebody gets up on him with a couple guns, and he gets spotted, he's going to have trouble. So he's got to rely on either his stealth or his mobility or a little bit of both. Now there's the 25 TP. Looks like he's just driving over there. I'm taking a shot in there. This is an interesting sequence too. There's a shot that hits him in the track but doesn't track him. We get a shot. Again, your your lead fire there is a little bit. You're kind of center of mass on that guy. And Oh, holy cow, there's a 12T here now. Now we've got to move. We don't want to sit there. The 60 GFT. There's a Churchill 3. They're all here. There's four. There's four how is that M4 still alive? He's shooting people. And now our hero is the ring around the rosy. <laughs> Everyone's shooting. Just bad gunner. He takes down the 12T. Somehow kills the 12T. Churchill gets a piece of him. But it's a crit, no damage. M4 is still alive. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, oh. stop, stop. Oh man, you do this a couple times. I mean, I hit the bridge right here. That's unfortunate. The M4 is still alive. He kills the T6. Stop! Stop! <laughs> and well, the reason I'm saying that is you had shots. All you needed to all you need to do or be fine. That guy. All you need to do is stop and start shooting that guy. His side armor. Look at he's looking towards the O1 actually, or into the back of the turret. We spent a lot of time kind of maneuvering around, moving around, and you may be looking for bushes. But you had shots in there to take. So there's the 12T. Go after the Churchill. Again, sh shot selection. You got a one shot Churchill. Who cares about that guy right now? You're going to outspot him for days. And stop if you want those shots. I don't know if he saw you because I didn't see your six cents go up. But discretion being the better part of Valor, he moves back. Get the Churchill. Stop. Stop. <laughs> back of the turret. Back of the turret. Back of the turret. Or, no, no, back. Where are we going? Center mass and a lucky. Slightly left of center shot gets into the back. Nicely done. And stop and fire. Stop. Stop moving. Stop. <laughs> a lot of extra maneuvering going on. And I think a lot of it is, all right, I want to get as far away as possible from these guys. And I do understand that part. And now, has he moved out of the bush? Where'd that guy go? Obviously still in there. The 60 GFT is hanging out there somewhere. Couple shots into him. Oh, there we go. Look at this. Five kills. For type what what's it? Type Vic? Type Vic? From, oh man. And the the T D decides he's gonna have to go do something about the T fifty, who is stealthily killing everybody from the bushes, which is was the exact right answer. And unfortunately for him, he did not have either the alpha or the DPM slash reload time to take you down. Nice wiggle jiggle so the artillery doesn't get a good beat on you. And now we are just pushing in. What is the O1 doing up there? <laughs> we'll have to see what his damage is when we get to the results page here at the end. Thank God for this T50. The O1 says, I know right, he's a beast. Oh, Mr. O1. I think he probably got down to very low hit points and spent the rest of the game hiding from artillery. 
he was probably figured that was the most dynamic thing he could do at the point at that point so nice game there six kills let's see if he gets the seventh kill and what his actual hit point total is but going back to what I was talking about it was a good initial position I, I usually go up to the northwest but I understand why people go down to the southeast if they do it they need to be active early on you were and the enemy did oblige because they did a lot of spotting themselves and letting themselves get shot stop 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 <laughs> stop so this is again interesting either stop earlier or go just a little bit further for go just a little bit further forward because actually driving forward is faster you'd have had your shots a little bit earlier but we're gonna find this dude and he is bumming now got spotted can't see you Dunk. another shot let's just enjoy the moment as artillery dies down it goes seven kills 2040 damage 185 spotting slash assist damage so what I was talking about going down to the southeast it's what you do after you win that flank and the problem with it is it, it's very much always like what just happened in that you won it but there wasn't a lot of opportunity to flex to anywhere else from there it's very difficult to flex to anywhere from that southeast corner it's much easier from the northwest side simply because there's more land up there to move around plus there's the edge you can get up to there's the city you can filter through it's easier to flex back not easier necessarily but you can flex back to the cap the one thing you can do from the southeast is flex back to your caps that's the one easy thing that you can do but you're also swept by fire from guys hanging out in the village up at top up at the top sometimes the southeast will have shots on guys being dopey here in the lower part of the village or this the southeast part of the village but i think it's more often that these guys have shots over here just depends on how that battle's going and what the spotting situation is but if you're going to do it the way that type vic did it then do it right like he did where he was very careful use the bushes use the distance a couple times i'd have been much more aggressive but i can't argue the 2040 damage seven kill game in a Tier 5, T50. Fantastic, man. Thanks for sending that in. I do appreciate it. Thanks, everybody else, for your support of the channel. Keep it coming, and we will. See you.